quickly an aside, my question. When they say under the belt selfie, right. are they saying a selfie for the dick or his face actually in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, the only podcast keeping you from spiraling out into the infinite abyss. I'm your host, Daniel, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother and co-host, Joseph. What's going on? But wait, what if I was to tell you there's more? (laughs) (laughs) What if if I told you you got not two, but four hosts? For the the price of two. Or wait a second, this is free, so it doesn't fucking matter. (laughs) <laughs> That's, right. That's right. We're just uh, deals, 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 man. Deals. And a free host for you, and a free host for you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, this is going to be a little bit different, this episode. Um, we have some uh, guests on. Uh, on my end, i uh, got a buddy in town, uh, Nick Capote. He uh, went to pharmacy school with me, and uh, he's just going to be opining on the, the articles, as we always do. So, Nick, you want to say hello? Yeah, good to be here. Adding to the value today, we hope. Yeah, exactly. And Joseph, I I heard you got somebody else, though, so. I do, yep. So um, I have a colleague, Max Bronstein. We work together uh, in Los Angeles uh, uh, in a variety of different capacities. Um, And we are coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Been up here for a few meetings, so thought we would pull him in and get him to participate and say hello. Say what's up, Max. Hey, everyone. Excited to be here. Hopefully I can be even as half as funny as the Bradley brothers. <laughs> so, but but this is this is the thing, though. This is Max's, what, second podcast, second podcast. in a week, dude. Oh, no so shit. This guy's, this guy's picking up some fucking steam, man. He's hitting the circuit. <laughs> he, he puts it out quicker than we can, man. <laughs> That's right. He's hitting the, he's hitting the circuit, dude. He's got, he's got something. We'll, we'll wait. We'll wait till we get in and kind of and kind of can read between the lines because he's shilling something. We just don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Practicing one-liners all week. <laughs> yeah, right. The art of the zinger. That's the, it. the art of the zinger. <laughs> all right. Well, um, so yeah. yeah I guess without so, further ado, we'll we'll, uh, we'll cruise on. Um, yeah, dude. So I wanted to start off this first one with uh, kind of light. Uh, we got we got Valentine's Day coming up. Um, and by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and put this out there. I know I sound like absolute hell. Listeners, I apologize. Uh, I've got some kind of like, I don't know what going on with my throat going. And plus, you, the, uh, what's you that? don't sound that bad, dude. Uh, okay, well, that <laughs> that makes me feel horrible. So. <laughs> but anyway. I think that's your natural voice. <laughs> this is my natural voice. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I wanted to start off this episode with uh, kind of a lighter article. I pulled it from uh, CBS News. Uh, this zoo will name a cockroach after your ex, and then it will they will feed it to a meerkat on Valentine's Day. <laughs> so, uh, but how much does this cost? Uh, that's a good question, man. I actually don't know. All right, let me hit. Uh, let me hit Google and see what I can find out. Yeah, because they they actually will your ex a, know of this, or is this just like personal? I think it's vendettas. yeah. I think it's personal vendettas being uh, just. Uh, I don't know. It, it makes you it makes you feel better to watch a meerkat munch down on a cockroach that's named your your ex. Or so, <laughs> so this says it is. Um, oh, okay, wait a second. There, so there are a couple of different cockroach offerings this oh, time of year. Okay, okay. Um, and it's an ICO. It's an, an initial I- cockroach offering. Our initial cockroach <laughs> offering. That's exactly right. So that's exactly right. So um, let's see. There's another cockroach offering here that is uh, they'll cost you 15 bucks. Um, let's see, and that is they'll name a Madagascar hissing, hissing co- cockroach. Have you ever um, seen those fuckers? Yeah, dude. They might, uh, yeah, they're huge. It's and like they are straight up like when they say a hissing cockroach, it fucking hisses so loud. Because uh, I had a buddy out in Granger, and he had like a, a like a whole like cage of them, and they'd all get like under un- underneath the, like this log, and he'd flip over the log, and they'd just be like, kind of thing. Who was this, Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at pictures, man. These things are huge. They're I want to take them bite. 
I don't know, man. He, I mean, he he seemed like he was pretty fine with putting his hand in there. So, mm-hmm. but he's also kind of a kook. Yeah. So, and he he was pretty fine with putting his hand in a lot of places. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. All right. So the hissing cockroach. We'll yeah. we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Luckily, you know. Well, I guess I can't speak. For, I can't speak for Max and um, and yeah. Nick here. But yeah. uh, but uh, like everything's pretty smooth in my relationship right now. So I think I'm. I think I'm cool on the cockroach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, I did the ICO last year, so I got it out of my <laughs> system. <Yeah. laughs> right. <laughs> Nick, Nick, you think that uh, you're gonna get exes that deserve the the cockroach treatment? <laughs> I could definitely add to the cockroach list. It, it looks like, but <laughs> I'm I'm looking at how you submit, and it looks like that it's via Facebook. Um, and so I'm actually on the Facebook page now, and there's over four thousand comments, <laughs> and a lot of this is getting pretty detailed. Like they're getting into the stories about some of these exes, and oh, then you have people responding and consoling. And I'm actually I'm kind of interested in the logistics of this. Like, how are over four thousand cockroaches going to be released at once? Yeah. Plus, I mean, can't you overfeed the meerkats? Jesus, I'm worried for them. <laughs> <laughs> these meerkats gained fifteen pounds. They're all they're all sitting around. Uh, this is like furry job of the huts. <laughs> well, so I'm doing the live stream of their current habitat, and there's not many of them, <laughs> so I don't really know how they're gonna actually handle all these all these roaches. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit, man. But yeah, dude. So uh, so get on it. If you're uh, any listeners out there have some exes that they uh, they want to submit, man. The deadline's coming up, so you better uh, better get on it. So so okay, the the cockroaches. Sure, that's interesting. But what's really really interesting is when you open your closet and you find a man in your closet wearing your clothes. Like that's really especially that's when really, you're a female. Especially <laughs> when you're a female, and I think that's the the real gift that most women want on on Valentine's Day is just a delightful surprise like this. So what yeah. what is this what is this fuckery that so, you uh, that you that you put up here? Yeah, so I found this one on uh, by NBC News, and uh, it was it was titled "College Student Finds Man Hiding in in Her Closet Wearing Her Clothes." And so uh, when when Nick and I were going over articles this morning, like we were, we were kind of just you know whatever talking about this <laughs> stuff, and like dude, it actually it seems really fucking creepy just the lead up to him. I mean, he see this dude. They've got a picture of him and. He he looks like a motherfucker that you'd find he does, in your closet. No, he he does meth for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, do you think he like does meth and then like wants to do? I think drag? He's, I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty clear he's living his best life. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, with his best I mean, foot forward. <laughs> he's, he's that's exactly right, man. He's putting on the ritz. You know, <laughs> putting um, on the fucking ritz. I he, she says I just hear rattling in my closet. It sounded like a raccoon in my closet. I'm like, who's there? And somebody answers me. He's like. Oh, my name is Drew. Yeah. <laughs> so polite. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I would love, well, first of all, I would love to know what he was wearing in particular. Because I um, feel like, I feel like, you know, you think he had like some heels on kind of thing? Or do you think it's it was no, It's like, North Carolina. It's, 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 um, you know, it's winter in North Carolina. I think he had a light, a little light cami, maybe some, um, you know, some pumps for sure. Yeah, for sure yeah. some pumps. Um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Definitely yeah. a definitely a bra. I don't think it was, you know, buckled in the back, but I think he had it on. <laughs> oh man. Have you're... we confirmed that his name actually is Drew or was that his name in the outfit at the time? Like oh, that's changed with outfits. So yeah, it is because Drew. it's Andrew Swafford. Yeah, but the but he's got a good point cuz I mean, like, do you think if he had a different like garb on, then he'd be Andy? <laughs> I would like to know if this uh, mugshot was right after he was trying on the clothes because it doesn't seem like he was too stoked about how they looked on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. He wanted yeah. to return them. Yeah. <laughs> he, was un- he was unhappy. You know, she was a, she was a size size six. It didn't work out. It brought back a lot of childhood memories of his <laughs> <laughs> overweight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Man. Excuse me. The little little uh, portion of last night coming back, man. Yeah, but yeah. So uh, police showed up and you know took him away. So well, yeah. I think it's Drew. Think it's funny. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, Drew. Drew will be uh, cross dressing a little less now. So well. So so what I think is interesting is um, this line right here. The woman called her boyfriend 
who showed up at the apartment and made Swafford leave. Like, that's just such a mellow... <laughs> yeah, right? A mellow way to address Your it. Your fucking girlfriend calls you and tells you some dude's fucking dressing her clothes in her closet? Like, you go in and you point your finger at him and you go, Hey, man, you need to leave. Not cool, bro. Not yeah. cool. Yeah, right? <laughs> what, what, what do you have? Do you have a cami on? What do you have, pumps? What is this, a bra unbuckled? You need to leave, Drew. That outfit looks fucking atrocious, you bitch. <laughs> I, dude, <laughs> for, for boyfriend addressed it like that, that would, that would be really incredible. I bet they broke up. Speaking <laughs> of, speaking of, <clears throat> so um, this is everybody's fresh with Reddit here. Everybody's no, knows Reddit on this, right? Mm-hmm. Nick, you're you're down with Reddit. Yeah. So I saw one a few a few months ago. That I'm, I'm just going to bring this up because it was it's kind of in the vein of this. Um, <clears throat> of this kind of theme here of the boyfriend coming in and being mellow. So this, this, um, this chick was asking in the, uh, subreddit, uh, relationship advice, um, laid this story out, was asking for, uh, Reddit's opinion. So apparently she's walking with her boyfriend down the street and this guy whips a knife out, right? Like that mugger. And the boyfriend turns turns around and takes off running the other way. And so then the mugger grabs her and puts this – no, it wasn't a knife. It was a screwdriver. And puts a screwdriver to her neck. And the boyfriend hauls ass in the other direction, right? Okay. So so she can't – she gets out of the situation, gives the guy her wallet, gets out of the situation. She's like walking, like stunned, trying to figure out what happened or whatever. Um, calls the boyfriend. Can't get in touch with the boyfriend. Apparently this guy just – hauled ass in the other direction finally she gets in touch with him and he was like i was running to the police station <laughs> <laughs> what to get help right cheese, dude, to get man. help and so her question was like you know should i should I be done with this guy right and it's just like fuck yeah are you kidding me man you no know shit dude are you fucking kidding me that's pretty gnarly. that's you, pretty gnarly like, although although it's it's tough to speculate what you do but i would hope that i would you know, stand and deliver and not sprint for the police station. <laughs> sprint for the police. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd probably, uh, I'd, I'd probably hang around. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, well, first of all, it's a fucking screwdriver. Why would you not, like, grab your girlfriend and be like, dude, fucking let's truck kind of thing? Um, I, I don't know. She could have been on, she could have had one leg. She could have been just like. I think she was, I bet, I bet she was a fatty. <laughs> Oh, Daniel. Because it's like, you know, the thing is, is, you know, if you're getting chased, you know, multiple people being chased by like a bear, you only have to outrun the other people. This is true. You don't have to outrun the bear. This is true. (laughs) So if you're in, if you're, if you ever are in a situation where, where a, you know, um, somebody who's looped on, uh, you know, some sort of narcotic approaches you, the screwdriver, it's the same thing. You just have to outrun everybody else. Actually, Max, you, you probably, you know, have had some. Some interesting uh, run-ins with characters like this in, in San Francisco. Max lives in San Francisco. I bet you see some weird shit up there. Yeah. You see any muggings? Yeah, I heard not, there's not a, a lot, lot of shit things. on the street. Or a lot of just like direct uh, heroin injections. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A couple, wow. couple break-ins. Really? A couple, what? A couple house break-ins, but okay. I, I was more at a distance. So, so is the poop problem as bad as like everybody yes. builds it up to be? Yeah, I mean, it, it's gotten to the point where, I mean, in real other cities, you see a lot of poop, but mm-hmm. your first instinct is that, oh, it's a dog, so it's all it's all cool, and the owner will pick it up. Yeah. Uh, in SF, though, you know it's a human species, because no dog is just going to get on the middle of the street. There, there, there's no really dogs in San Francisco, especially right. Soma. There's mm-hmm. just needles and poop. Yeah, and, and, you know, when you're walking up on this thing, like, very, very few dogs eat so many... You know, eat, eat spinach and beanie weedies. <laughs> I don't know how we explicit we can get with your listeners, right. but there was one time we headed out to lunch, and there was a uh, homeless man who was uh, pretty naked, just right in front of everyone next to a food truck, just just laying one down. Yeah, it was one of the most explicit things I've ever seen. And you're like, that you're like, sir. And he was, I was just like, there's more room out than in. <laughs> He's like making, it was, did you say it was near a, a food truck? Yeah. Right next to a food truck. Yeah, he was probably just making room for lunch, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, taquitos, all right. <laughs> Two, please, uh, give me a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, awesome. so, so. 
let's pull this. Uh, let's pull into into Jeff the the Jeff Bezos debacle. It, yeah. By the way, is it Bezos or Bezos? Bezos. It's definitely yeah, I Bezos. It was Bezos. I hear people that are like Bezos, and I'm like, okay, no respect for you. So, so does he have? He, he does have some weird thing going on with his eyes, right? Because it looks like half of him's on oh. caffeine and half of him's on some kind of depressant. No, I think that's just yeah. I think it's just the weight of the money pressing down, <laughs> pre- pressing down on his face. Yeah, you know? oh, that's awesome. Um, I, what do you mean? His face isn't symmetrical? No, or like symmetric? literally, like his eye, like his. If you're looking at this photo that's been circulating or whatever that everybody's been using it for their articles, and literally, if you cover half of his face. Like his right eye looks completely different than his left eye in regards to how open it is and stuff. Right. I don't know. It's just weird. But anyway. So okay. So let's 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 skin this thing. Pardon the pun. But let's uh let's let's get let's get the skin out on this thing. See Let's what's up. Um. Okay. So dear listeners. Um. This the the first article here was from was from Mashable. Uh. But I'm I want to go to the source. Yeah. Because rarely do you see um, people that are in the situation that uh, Mr. Jeff Bezos is in, um, you know, come out and meet this so head on, right? So let's just catch everybody up quickly. What happened? Jeff so, Bezos. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I you go you. ahead. No, you well, go ahead. So basically uh, what, what happened was um, – the National Enquirer, uh, also, I guess, uh, American Media Incorporated, um, led by, uh, was it David Pecker? Is that correct? That is correct, David okay. Pecker. So, uh, basically, they published a bunch of text messages um, that from Jeff Bezos, or that were sent by Jeff Bezos in, in a National Enquirer. And, uh, and correct me if I'm uh, getting this wrong, but... Um, they had already published some of those. And so uh, Jeff Be- Bezos decided to hire a PI to uh, look into how the hell that they obtained the text messages. Right. And uh, so once once uh, the Inquirer realized, and uh, I guess David Packer um, realized that they were being investigated, they, uh, they basically... Um, contacted Jeff Bezos and said, hey, there's more from where that came from in addition to we have nude photos of you and we will publish all of this shit if you uh, don't go and basically have like a uh, public conference and say that like whatever, that the National Enquirer isn't, you know, whatever, responsible for like defamation or anything of Jeff Bezos kind of thing. That's that's the gist of so. uh, what so I it. it's I think it's in, it's really interesting that uh, that right okay and so and Jeff Jeff Bezos then comes out spins up a Medium article Medium is the the blog site mm-hmm. the uh, Amazon comms team spun up a Medium article yeah okay okay <laughs> right <laughs> right that's a good point Max um, called No Thank You Mr Pecker right. Um, it's it's kind of on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's well, it's maybe it's on the nose. You know, <laughs> it, might, it might be on the pecker. Be on the pecker. Yeah, <laughs> it might be a, direct, a direct pecker shot. Um, and so they get into in this article, which is which is um, really approachable. Um, they just kind of uh, look to reframe the the conversation. Um, around this idea that he cannot, um, you know, he can't relent to this blackmail now. Otherwise, he'd make him his, himself, his self, a target for the future. Mm-hmm. And so he is not going to, you know, yield to this blackmail, right? Yeah. And so um, you may be seeing uh, a dick worth $150 billion. I guess the divorce isn't final, yeah, right? I think he's sitting at like 65 now. 65 bill. <laughs> Um, and that's a rich dick, you know, it's just fucking insane, dude. Yeah. So, so what's, what's interesting, first of all, um, I, I, I don't know, Max, would you, um, would you handle this in the same way? Would you come at it, come at it, you know, head on like this? What do you think? So, yeah. I mean, he's getting coached, of yeah. course, but 
were, ha, have the um, what was the term for the picture? The under the belt selfie. <laughs> 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 the under the belt so, so my, I guess quickly and aside, my question: When they say under the belt selfie, right? Are they saying a selfie for the dick or his face actually in the picture? <laughs> <laughs> right, he's laying on his back. And he's only got a belt on, right? And it's just dong, and then you just see his, his weird eye peeking up in the background. Yeah. <laughs> um, so has the picture been released? Uh, no, they're no, saying they're saying this will. Yeah, they're saying they will. Yeah. So they've got here's a list of the picks according yeah, dude, you, to you. Got to read some of those. So they've got uh, which, by the way, we'll also get into how Jeff Bezos some of the text messages that they released. Man, it was it was. It was pretty interesting, which I should also say the goal here is not to mock Jeff Bezos. It's just a it's fucking Twilight Zone when you have somebody that's the richest man in the world shooting dick pics off to people. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But uh, let's say uh, let's see. It says uh, in addition to the below the belt, otherwise colloquial known as dick pic, the below the belt selfie, otherwise colloquial known as a dick pic. The Inquirer obtained a further nine images. These include Mr. Bezos. Uh, face selfie at what appears to be a business meeting. Miss Sa- Sanchez response: a photograph of her smoking a cigar and what appears to be a simulated oral sex scene. She could have just been enjoying a cigar. She could. <laughs> I mean, dude, who does a deep throat a cigar before that's, they smoke? That's exactly right. Well, that's just gonna be, you gotta dip it, you know. Um, a shirtless Mr. Be- Beza. God, the, the Bezos Bezos things really fucking me up. A shirtless uh, Mr. Um, Bezos. Holding his phone in his left hand while wearing his wedding ring. Okay, whatever. He's wearing either tight black cargo pants or shorts. Respect. That's where he puts his shit. Um, and his semi-erect manhood is penetrating <laughs> penetrating <laughs> garment. Dude, who the fuck hasn't taken a full torque a full torque cargo <laughs> pants picture? <laughs> I mean, oh, shit. That's the definition of a fucking boss mode. You know what I mean, dude? Yeah, you've just got to have. You, you, I think the only, the only thing that would complete it is if you just, you, you had like a, ha- a half ham sandwich tucked into the cargo <laughs> <into the laughs> pants. You know? um, uh, um, okay, so yeah, semi erect manhood penetrating the zipper of said garment. Uh, a full length body selfie, just wearing. Tight black boxers, okay, whatever. A selfie of Mr. Bezos fully clothed, a full length scantily clad. Hey, who gives a shit? Yeah. This is just somebody's <laughs> personal life, right? Yeah. Um, but I think that it's it's really really interesting how this cat's handling this. Um, and I with this next comment, um, I I am <clears throat> I don't know. I'll qualify the statement if I need to. But politicians should fucking take note. You know, like yeah. when you get caught doing doing something that's gnarly, fess, admit that you're just human, and move on, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but these don't, homies don't try to qualify it. No, no, good God, or or what? Yeah, or whatever, or like pay hush money and make it go away. Like just handle yeah. it. People yeah. respond to it a little bit. Be- Bezos could be playing everyone right now, and he knows he has a nine inch pecker, so he's yeah. like release. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right maybe yeah maybe he's looking to like you know break into the, the porn industry or something <laughs> like he's got a bionic amazon you know fucking log and he's like you know yeah or this is just the best go to market for amazon's uh, yeah. take over the porn industry yeah that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Now they're yeah. It. yeah that's exactly porn right. who? Porn he, says, who? <laughs> he says he says uh it was so embarrassing when my large veiny super long <laughs> dick with did i mention it was girthy <laughs> yeah that's exactly right that's exactly right so i think actually, i can't I think get my hand it. around it <laughs> <laughs> if i could only lift it i could have gotten the whole thing in the picture but i think i think the max is bringing up a good point man they're 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 you know full on either in, in porn or you know some amazon prime dong offering yeah you know well, and the, the thing is, is thank God for uh, panoramic uh, camera modes so that they can get the whole dong in the photo. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's it's um, I really really love this response. These this guy's fucking smart. He's got the best people in the business working for him and with him. Um, you know, people fuck up. It's pretty amazing to me that you have a hundred and fifty billion dollars, right? Um, yet, you know. 
uh, I don't know. You cut that in half for ass. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty, yeah. pretty crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just, I tend to think <clears throat> the, the patriarchy, I don't think it's real, man. I think women have more control than they ever, than they, than they know. Speaking they, of that, world, for sure. Hey, speaking of that, um, there, there was a book that I read, uh, probably four or five years ago called uh, female chauvinist pig or P- female chauvinist pigs, I believe. And, uh, I believe I think that, I vaguely remember that dude, it is absolutely one of the, like, it's so incredibly eye opening because it literally explains how women like basically can control people or not people women can control men with sexuality so fucking easily that it's like they they interviewed uh like exotic dancers and stuff and they're like do you think that you know do you think that this is demeaning to be a woman and to you know be taken off your clothes and have get, like dudes throwing money at you and shit and they're like no in my opinion i find it like extremely empowering because it's like dude it's so fucking i mean dude a woman can fucking flash her tits and like no kidding have a dude eating out of her hands in fucking seconds kind of thing um yeah i mean i'm not saying is that something that happened like is that is that like an attraction at the carnival (laughs) (laughs) it's like a it's like the uh, what's they, the they put some they put some corn nuts in their hand and then <laughs> and then fla- flash their boobs and then somebody comes up and eats them. And eats it <laughs> eats it's them. like the petting zoo. Yeah, but it's the, the I mean, heavy petting zoo. I mean, what 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 doesn't go into that statement is that like a lot of these people are just you know whatever have had a traumatic experience when they're young and are fucked up, right? But yeah, yeah. but that being said, it it is it is um, it is uh, I don't know. I think it's. It's interesting. Women are incredibly, um, probably the most powerful of the sexes, I would say. That's, yeah. that's number one. Number two, just to wrap the, the Bezos thing. Yeah. Um, dude, like, well done. The response is exactly what needed to happen. He's got this, this you know, kind of <clears throat> double speak in there. And um, what's, what's, what's the word? Like, thank you, Mr. Pecker, when you're double entendre. What is that? I think you're talking about a double entendre. Double entendre. Yeah, like two meanings to, yeah. to a statement. Yeah, yeah, double entendre, which is just, I mean, it's its amazing, right? Because it kind of makes it funny. It makes him seem human. Dude, I mean, these are smart fucking people, dude. Yeah. Smart, yeah. smart people. So, I don't know. Well, well, and they well work. Done. Yeah, and they work. They, they have a smart team of people. Kind yeah. of thing, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, I don't know, man. Well, he revealed it, too, in the article when he said that basically there was no budget for combating this. He's basically just saying... You know, me and my team, we're going to get it taken care of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. That's, I mean, fucking A, man. Fucking A, Tweety. <laughs> yeah. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. So, <clears throat> trucking on to the next one. This one's um, a little bit uh, little bit controversial here, but uh, I read this um, in the New York Times last week. Uh, let's see. Is that right? Yeah. Two, three. Yeah. So, this is um, it was a few weeks ago, I guess. And, um, <clears throat> no, exactly a week ago. So, um, this was, a uh, something interesting, um, coming out of New York. Um, the title of the article is, uh, Muslims form community patrol. Some neighbors say no thanks. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the sub, the sub, uh, subheading is the self-funded group sees itself, uh, as a neighborhood watch, but there was no, al- there was alarm after its cars were spotted in Brooklyn without warning or explanation. So what, what ended up happening is there was a, 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 um, uh, in a neighborhood in in Brooklyn, there there's a um, uh, fairly large Muslim community, and um, <clears throat> they ended up banding together and um, bringing in uh, you know paying for a neighborhood watch. And that's not unique. You, neighborhoods do this all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You see the signage up, and you know whatever the 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 um, you know president of the homeowners association or whatever. Mm-hmm. Hops on his golf cart and goes around and makes sure people's doors are locked at Christmas. Um, the difference here is that uh, they they purchased cars for the neighborhood watch to uh, to use, and these ca- these cars look identical to New York City um, a certain type of New York City patrol car, right? Yeah. Uh, like NYPD. 
Um, and so that was one of the one of the bits of pushback was that uh, some people in the neighborhood felt like that that they, they hadn't properly explained what they were going to be doing with the neighborhood watch, and so people were unnerved to see um, a car that looked like an NYPD car. Um, looked like they were certainly trying to give the impression that it, this was a New York, you know, New York Police Department vehicle, um, but it wasn't, right? It was a, a a a Muslim neighborhood watch. Now, which hey, real quick in regards to the car, I don't understand how because there's there's a specific uh, part of, of this article and it says that they had a police car, uh, or it, it looked like a police uh, squad car with red and white emergency lights. I didn't realize I, – I thought that it was illegal to have – unless no. you were part of a police department or some kind of emergency service mm-hmm. to have emergency lights on no. the vehicle. No. So the, 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 the details around that are that you can't have – it's like you can't have like red, colors. red, blue. Yeah, it's like red, blue, and something. But what gotcha. you – it's like red and blue, right? Yeah. But what you can have um, are – like flashing uh, yellow lights, like the construction lights or whatever that, yeah. that people put on their cars. You can have, um, <clears throat> you know, flashing lights. I mean, they sell these. Um, retail stores sell these yeah. and you can buy them. Oh, interesting. But anyway, sorry. Anyway, so, so you know, I guess the question here is, um, you know, without a doubt, people have got the right to, to spin up organizations to keep their community safe. Absolutely. Totally welcomed. Like, I'm glad you give a shit enough to – you know, try to keep your community, you know, um, um, and you've got enough people in the community that are willing to volunteer to come in and kind of, you know, defend the community, make sure everything's safe. But um, it is, it was really interesting once you get into the article, um, because let's see, let's see, uh, there was a quote here, which I'll have to find, I'll kind of flick this over to you guys for um, for some general, general commentary here, but um, but there's a quote that I was going to find that um, you know I, that, that was talking about um, talking about you know if there are people that that are coming into our community and we don't want them in our community, you know it's our job to make sure that they stay out of our community. Um, and so here's the thing, man. I mean, the, it's kind of a it's kind of a gnarly idea, I guess. You know, like if all of a sudden you peeked out your window and in San Francisco or Los Angeles, you know, you see like cars that fucking look like patrol cars, like maybe that would be a little bit unnerving. But the nature of what they're trying to accomplish is, um, yeah, of course they should be able to do that, you know. Um, so anyway, I just thought it was it was interesting because it's touchy because of this of this powder keg, you know, um, uh, racial discussion yeah. um yeah. you know in uh in the united states so i'd be interested to hear your guys opinion on that yeah dude um i mean and i think that that's it's just with the the muslim community in general right is, is that what you just said or oh, i guess you stepped away anyway yes um, Okay. Yes, that's exactly that's exactly what I said. No, I didn't step away. We're so we are on the road, and yeah. um, there was a very aggressive woman handing out towels <laughs> at, at the door. <laughs> so know. yeah, so um, but but anyway, so they, yeah, that's the question. I mean, first of all, you know, should these people have the right to do it? Second of all, like the the kind of you know, uh, I think why people are a little bit amped on this or a little bit ramped up about it is is just the execution. But it's like you know, it seems. Um, I don't know. Seems interesting. Seems like this kind of conversation is just uh, like the country is in a place where the, this this kind of conversation is like really touchy now, which is which is uh, well, you know, I mean, do you take think, note of. So, do you think that like because obviously you know it has a big um, MC what is it MCP on the side? Yeah, for Muslim uh, Community Patrol, and so I feel like when people take. When people take uh, steps in the directions like this, that you know, instead of instead of uh, causing the United States to become, um, I don't know, strong, more more well founded, I guess, uh, and just have a stronger mm-hmm. base. You well, I, I let me. Are you saying? Are you saying that this is um, this is uh, divisive? One hundred percent. I I would view it as pretty fucking divisive. Right. Right. But I mean, you know, it's it's interesting because if you put yourself in, you know, let's say that you're a minority in a big city and you're getting shit and people aren't doing anything about it. 
Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you, I mean, you got, you, you know, what are you not going to defend yourself, right? Oh, yeah, but I totally. Think, but I think that, I think that what's really interesting about this is that, I mean, these fucking cars really do look like NYPD cruisers. Oh, yeah. um, Where did they get the cars? Yeah, I, that's a good question. I don't think they they mentioned this in the article, but um, mm-hmm. but you know we'll have this posted in show notes. Um, and it it really does look like a like <clears throat> a kind of like Muslim officer. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, not yeah. necessarily a um, a protection officer. It just looks like I can understand why you know why there's a little bit of pushback for this. But the other thing that I would say is there's got to be a policy. For it, like, it, it, there's got to be some sort of um, program for the NYPD or you know wherever, wherever you yeah. are, the, the local police department to encourage um, you know citizens to you know, be aware and kind of um, report suspicious things. So I would find it hard to believe that there's not a, a process you can go through to you know become not deputized, but to become mm-hmm. you know like an official neighborhood watch group. Um, and I, I would find that really hard to believe that that doesn't exist in, in New York, Los Angeles or San Francisco. And so, um, I think so, that's the thing that people, that people have been unnerved about is that it's just, um, not knowing about this and not like socializing the concept. Um, right. you know, I think maybe, maybe freak some people out and, you know, frankly, man, I guess, I guess I get it, but I think these people should absolutely have the right to spin something up. It's just, like you said, be more communicative about it and, uh, you know, maybe try to reach a little further over the aisle or something. I don't know. So you you think that uh, addressing it in this manner is, like, I guess within, I I don't even know... um, I don't even know how to state that, but I think, think if it was, I think if it would be properly, I think if it were, I guess. no, no, as a matter of fact, I'd call this ass backwards mm. just to put a fine, a, like a fine, a fine underscore on it. Like it doesn't, to me, it's like, if the goal is, um, if the reason, okay. So if you back up and you say, okay, well, why would people be giving, you know, Muslim, Muslim people shit. Well, it's maybe they don't understand what's going on. They don't like understand what they're up to in the mosque. They don't understand, you know, that the, that, you know, and who knows, maybe people are good, good people trying to open a, you know, what they do work with the homeless or whatever. Right. So my point is, is there's like, there is a lack of understanding that it's that and so if that's the issue, if truly there is a lack of understanding, this doesn't seem like the, the right way to go about it. But that's kind of not my read on the article. My read on the article is that um, is that this community is like, well, we're going to do what we're going to do. And if people disagree with that, then we're just going to keep those people you know, out of the community, which is a definitely a more challenging approach you know, to take. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of the community, it's interesting to see the mixed reactions because it definitely highlights some people who are uncomfortable with it. But then there are also the business owners who say, yeah, this is welcome. And obviously, especially the Muslim business over owners, they see this as, as welcome as well. And it even says in the article, you know, presence is prevention. That's kind of what they're going off of. Mm. I guess my question is, how does the NYPD feel about this? Is this anything other than a distraction and something else to manage? Or could this ever be something that the NYPD is thankful for? Yeah, almost like almost to get like the NYPD's like support kind of thing. For, for like yeah, having they truly service. do act as eyes and ears and are reporting what they yeah. see, and that's it. They're yeah. not actually attempting to take a step forward as yeah. a law enforcement officer. Yeah. You know, is that a positive thing? Yeah. I, I can't, personally, I can't see this as any more than just something else to manage for the NYPD, but, yeah. you know, maybe they're actually trying to go for you know, mm. more of a positive. I don't know. I need <laughs> to be an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this seems uh, like it's pushing the boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a really really tough conversation because because <clears throat> well you just have to walk a super fine line but you know cuz obviously you only have certain rights as a citizen you know and then once you step over that line then it's like okay you know that's that's where law enforcers you know reside I guess you know mm-hmm. Well and the the other thing is um that I think the, I mean, you know, personal opinion here, but one of the things that makes the United States so rad is the fact that you have all these different perspectives that kind of come in and there is a layer of, of assimilation in some sort, right? There's this like fiber of being an American. Um, and I think that like, 
it's kind of controversial, but I think, you know, people, um, I say it's controversial. Like it's a fucking fact that like when you come in, when you share, um, when you share traits with fellow people that are citizens of the same country, like that's, that seems to be like a position of strength. Right. So it's like, everybody's got a a different background. That's fine. But we all, you know, whatever are like headed in, in the same direction. I think ultimately when, um, and I think I think some expectation of assimilation. I don't think that's racist. I think that's realistic, right? Like if you. Which and we were talking about that a couple of days ago when we were going over articles to cover. <clears throat> Just the fact that it's like, um, you know, you go to uh, a, a Muslim um, majority country, or I mean, like for or instance, even uh, dude, or even make it lighter than that. Even okay. make it lighter than that. If you go to Japan. Yeah. Right. If you move to Japan, right? Like if you move to China, if you move to, you know, Italy or what whatever. I mean, it's not I don't know. There the and these are like places that in 2019 I think most would call multicultural to a certain extent, but there is a pervasive culture that's there mm-hmm. and when you when you take the jump to go and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I'm, I'm out of the United States. I don't want to be a citizen of this country anymore. I'm going to go someplace, someplace else, and be a citizen of that country. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that it's not unrealistic to say, okay, fine. You need to, as an American, right? You're going to move there. No, it's an unrealistic expectation for you to move to Japan and every, and expect everybody to speak English. That's yeah, a little exactly. bit crazy. Like, and no, and no, it doesn't make sense that you know, whatever cultural nuances that, that exist in Japan, like that you just can brush all that aside and, and just not behave in that way. I mean, I, I will tell you this, when Max and I um, were working together in at this tech company in Venice, we started doing business with, uh, with uh, a Japanese company, right? Mm-hmm. The level of thought and planning that had to go into that was absolutely insane, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had to have uh, business cards printed on both sides. Like it had to, you know, had to be you know Japanese on one side and uh, mm-hmm. and English on the other side. Like that's pretty common. Um, when you presented a card, um, you had you uh, it was polite to present it with two hands. And of course, you know, you you want the business and you want to be respectful of this new partner that you're bringing on. So we we embodied those you know those customs, right? Yeah. To, yeah. to and like and after each meeting, they wanted um, these guys wanted to take a picture, and that was like a th- that's a thing that's pretty well known. Um, and so it's just like you don't get to, you know, necessarily just sidestep, but at the same time, um, you know, again, like rolling into it's just a tough one. It's a really really tough conversation because you roll into a country and let's say people just hate you because of who you are. Yeah. You know, yeah, you got the right to defend yourself, but I think that um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, not thinking through ways of getting what you need, the support that you need in your community, um, and walking that line between you know realistic support and then just you know like drawing a th- or you know put, putting a moat in the ground where it's like yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, there is you're demanding the fact you know you're saying we're not going to assimilate fuck you like that's a that's a that's a uh, probably a trend that would not be very productive in the long run I think well, well there's just got to be some kind of um, you got to be meet in the middle somewhere you know yeah and I mean this is like this story of humanity right <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah. like that's the uh, but, and I mean uh, when the when the Japanese businessmen came over they adopted American culture and they took you and Max to a baseball game bought you a hot dog and a beer right <laughs> right they get we had back massages we all took our shirts <laughs> off and uh and you know at every every time there was a score a score or a base hit we'd you know slap belly buttons together that's something that's really popular <laughs> Kobe beef hot dogs too. Kobe beef hot dogs exactly. <laughs> exactly right marbled delicious hot dogs but mm. um Anyway, all right. Well, let's uh, let's truck on, man. I don't think we're going to solve that problem today, but that's a that's an interesting one. Um, yeah. So here we go. Amazon back in the news, baby. What's yeah, going let's, on? Let's, let's turn the spotlight back on Bezos. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I pulled this one from Engadget. Uh, the title of it was Amazon is reportedly using driver tips for their base pay. Um, so apparently, this is actually a semi common practice. Uh, which is kind of fucked. Um, they cited another business called Instacart 
that is a yeah, um, this was a this was a big deal. Instacart had to come out and make a like a public yeah. um, announcement. I, as a matter of fact, I think it was last week um, mm-hmm. about the, you know the guar- guaranteeing certain tips because they, they, these people were just getting fucked, man. Yeah. Well, so so basically, what what happened is uh, drivers that um, let's see, it's called the the Flex program, and uh, basically it's Uber for high speed deliveries. And they promised the contract drivers uh, a pay between eighteen and twenty five dollars uh, an hour, and so um, some of the drivers started thinking, "Hey, you know, I I know that I'm getting tipped, and I know I'm supposed to be getting this base pay. It doesn't seem like I'm getting all the money, you know? right?" And so uh, a couple of drivers decided to test the system. And so they had a, a driver from Virginia, and he he, uh, he tipped himself fifteen dollars and ninety cents to deliver paper towels to his own family. Uh, but his two power or his two hour pay for that shift didn't come with that amount, so he didn't even get that money until he filed a complaint with Amazon, and basically they, I guess, made it made the situation right, and you know in their their way but uh another driver decided to tip himself wait what does that mean are you reading made the situation right from the article no 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 i mean they it it, they said that they didn't get uh any anything extra for that day until he filed a complaint that's verbatim from the article so um so he had to literally basically look at his paycheck say hey i should have more money than this file a complaint and get them to fucking pay him which is absolute garbage but um then they had uh, another driver that tipped himself 12 bucks and he was supposed to get that on top of a promised 27 dollar base pay well simple math says 39 bucks is what he should have received well um he got a, a right around 30 bucks and so uh so basically they only contributed about 18 bucks uh to his payment which is nine bucks short by my calculator uh yeah by my calculation so but yeah go ahead go ahead well the this is this is the thing that i'm like are you fucking kidding me because i mean here these guys have literally tested the system and proven that they're they're you know they're not paying what they're supposed to be paying but uh amanda ip who apparently uh is a spokeswoman for the flex program she was quoted as saying, our pay commitment to delivery partners has not changed since we launched the Amazon Flex program. Delivery partners still earn 18 to, 20, uh, 18 to $25 per hour, including 100% of tips. So, uh, and on average, uh, drivers earn over $20 an hour. But this is, so, this is, this is. Go go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say I've got I've got a got a couple couple of things that I wanted to get get y'all's opinion on. Sure. So the the only thing that I was going to add was just I mean she's a sp- the spokeswoman for or a spokeswoman for the program, and she literally has said that they're supposed to receive one hundred percent of their tips, and it's been proven multiple times that they aren't. So, the, so so one of the 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 big overarching issue here is that like the gig economy is is pretty fucked up. Like when you pull the layers back here, like this is um what what do you mean by gig economy? It's a wealth inequality machine. Yeah, yeah it is. I, actually this is a great point. This is a great point. I, I would just say Airbnb is probably like the most prime example of this just because Obviously, people can now just purchase homes um, at really high prices without any intention of actually living in the home. Mm. Um, you know, you can hire a manager to run the listing for you, manage all of the uh, people who stay in the home, which which is good, right? Because those people are getting jobs, uh, but it pushes how like home prices up through the roof just because people are really quick to buy it because they're making quick buck, yeah. which is all good and uh, cheery when we're all you know vacationing a lot, things are good and you know we're visiting a lot of places, but. Um, yeah. you know, people can't afford homes. So yeah. 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 And, and so I, yeah, to, to, just to add to that, the gig economy, um, the, the, the promise that's sold is flexibility, right? Mm-hmm. You can work whenever you want and whatever. And that's not really, 
it's not really the, the, the circumstance because it's unrealistic to say I'm going to pop in and work fucking four hours a day as an Uber driver and that's how I'm going to make money. Like you just can't – It's you can't make money doing it. So yes, there's infinite flexibility but you've got – like you, there's no way to get around the fact that you have to spend time doing a task to be paid for that task. That's number one. Yeah. Number two um, – and this is – I don't really know what I'm what I'm saying with the second the second uh, the second comment here, but would love to kind of sort it out. Number two, it is insanely problematic that the only way to audit this in complex ecosystem is by self reporting, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we saw this with Facebook. Whole another story, but we saw this with yeah. Facebook self reporting. Um, ads uh what was it engagement time i think it was and over reporting engagement time in in some cases there's like a class action lawsuit that was filed three two or three months ago um in some cases over reporting engagement time by 60 percent according to this article 900 yeah, percent in other was, cases in, yeah in some cases up to 900 percent. 900 percent, right so so you are a a uh, person who's working for Instacart, you are a person that's doing something for, you know, Airbnb, you're a person that's, you know, working for Uber or whatever, you're, dude, you're at the mercy here. Like, the, the system is insanely complex, and what they probably, what's probably happening, first of all, most people that are working in these businesses don't really understand, you know, the 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 idea of depreciation, the complexity of you know what you're actually you know doing to your car within the context of the cash the new cash flow you're generating you know what i mean because if you really add it up all maintenance and gas and everything what you're probably seeing um even with an amazon delivery system what you're probably seeing is a bump in your cash flow so it looks it feels like you're making more money but you're actually not in the long run right yeah. um and that's 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 one thing and then i guess the the thing i'll wrap up here with is that it, it really is interesting as you start thinking about, you know, just I guess to go back to the last point, the, the, um, um, the complexity of these systems and the fact that, you know, they're, they're, I mean, this is capitalism, man. People get away with what they fu- can fucking get away with. And then when they get caught, they come back and they say, well, oops, you know, here's 10 grand. And it's like, you know, $10,000 or 50,000 or a million dollars to settle up with, you know, uh, delivery drivers to Amazon, like it ain't shit, you know? So they can just, they've got a revenue of a a billion dollars, you know? So it's like, what what did you, what did you call it? The cost of, uh, what's the term? The cost, the cost of, of doing business, business. cost yeah. of business, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, a funny thing on that when people were first opening dispensaries <laughs> in California. Yeah, people were going to jail left and right, you know, because the dispensaries um, there would be some gray area in terms of the licensing that was necessary. But these yeah. people were making so so much fucking money, they were just like, yeah, you know, spend a couple nights in the clink is just the cost of doing. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. you know, extrapolate that, and that's the way that these companies look at this. That this gig gigging idea at scale, it's not, it's not a great deal. Really, yeah. it's it's not that you know, it's not a great deal. And and you're just putting yourself at their complete mercy. Like, is there a difference when you go into a job that uh, where you know you are uh, a bona fide employee? You, you know, I would say without a doubt. You know, you've got if somebody like there are rule, clearly defined rules and regulations that that um that you know seek to outline how an employee uh and an employer behave appropriately you know within yeah. context and in this gig, gig um gig work that's not there and we still can't decide if uber drivers are employees you know yeah, so yeah, yeah. so i don't know i don't i don't see a quick fix on this i think it gets way worse i don't know what do you yeah. think what do you think I don't know about those job numbers, but I'm pretty sure Obama's job numbers got helped by the fact that Uber launched, and now that we had all these like independent contractors, right. you know, employment was a lot higher. Right. Um, I don't have too many thoughts. I'm generally pretty anti-Facebook. I think the whole thing's a sham. So I'm, <laughs> I say burn it down. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> man, I agree. I agree, and wholeheartedly. Um, you know, it sounds yeah. like you have something gnarly, like just like blocking your entire throat. <laughs> yeah, I know, right. <laughs> I might I might step away for one second uh, to get a glass of water or something. <laughs> I think that'd be advisable, man. Yeah. All right. Well, um, well, you wanna you wanna take us into the the Sprint uh, suing AT and T? 
Is yeah, cool? yeah. This one, this one, this is a this is kind of an interesting one here. Um, so anybody that that has a cell phone is probably aware of this the idea of uh, 3G, 4G. These are just descriptions of technology um, that uh, the that phone carriers use to um, to supply service to to their customers. Um, and so the the reason that uh, so, so there, there has been a rush in years past to develop new technologies that use bandwidth in novel ways um, in an effort to provide faster service, you know, to be able to, um, you know, at first when we all had Nokia brick phones, we were just calling, um, texting became a thing. We started using our phones for media and the demand on the infrastructure um, – you know, it was massive. Like the 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 pressure on the infrastructure to deliver um, mixed media to to the number of cell phones that are that are you know pulling from the network is is pretty wild. And so, what you've seen is this arms race um, in in telco telecom companies um, that uh, where they've you know the first to four G, the first to three G, the first to now now five G. Well, <clears throat> here's what's interesting. 5G, and I was trying to to get into the the nuts and bolts of what what the promise of 5G is, um, and unfortunately, I I uh, I wasn't successful in doing that. But 5 5G, <coughs> excuse me, 5G is very complicated. As a matter of fact, 5G is so complicated what the what 5G technology is supposed to be that many Intel comms. Um, have suggested that it's not real, that like the idea, it sounds like a natural evolution, but that there there are aspects of of the 4G infrastructure that would need to be evolved to support 5G functionality, um, and that uh, the promise of 5G is just like absurd, um, absurd uh, connectivity, super fast connectivity. Um, and so there's like there's been a, a lot of conversation from these companies, also from the federal government, which we covered this on on Tether last uh, September or October, I believe. But to kind of get there first um, because of, of the promise of 5G. So very long winded uh, lead up there. But the reason that this is <laughs> that this is interesting is because companies have already started to, to call their products. Um, by by you know suggest that they are five G products, and so Sprint is currently in a lawsuit uh, with AT and T over five G E, which is um, a a truncated um, uh, truncated tag for five G evolution, um, which is supposed to be you know a a faster four G, but not not quite five G. Again, very long description here, but here's the point. That's what the fucking way these companies work, man. You fake it till you make it. You like you say you've got something. You steer the market in that direction, and you build out, you know, to that direction. The difference is now information travels so fast, and information is free, and people have access to this, and so it's not. Um, it is becoming harder for companies, I think. To um, and we saw this in blockchain, man. We totally saw this in blockchain. But it's it's it is becoming harder for com- companies to like keep the bullshit up because the reality of what these technologies can do, it's available. People can get online, they can search it, they can look through you know the underlying technology and get some sort of cursory understanding as to actually how it comes together, <clears throat> and then they call bullshit. So anyway, it's just. This kind of stuff is interesting because while this is what well, you know, this is really low hanging fruit. Um, I think that it would freak people the fuck out to know how many products and services that are being suggested that are in full use just flat out are not. You know, I'm, I'm surprised they used 5G evolution before 5G actually came out. So what are they going to call? It? <laughs> 5G. <laughs> yeah, right. And so they've, they've just been slapping these 5G logos all over everything. And, and then AT&T is, you know, whatever, is pissed about it because it's, you know, it's a it's a marketing ploy. It's a marketing ploy and it's, it's kind of silly. And it's not new, right? Like this 5GE, they said this campaign by AT&T has been going on for two years. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. 
And so now that Sprint is finally to the point where they might be actually approaching actual 5G, now they want to do something about it and try and get AT&T to remove their branding. But you're absolutely right. I mean, companies do this stuff all the time. I just, I wonder if Sprint actually has any teeth to their to their lawsuit. I mean, yeah. what can they do? Mm. So, quick question for the uh, for the the Nick Daniel side of the table here. Um, and say what you can, because I know that you know both of you are in uh, you know went went to school for for pharmacy. Both of you are uh, you know doctors of pharmacy here. But I, I think this would be a really interesting commentary. <laughs> How prevalent is this in uh, with big pharma? I, like, I would say very prevalent. Um, I I know uh, there was a drug, and I don't know if you can help me out with the name of it, but it was a uh, diabetes medication that they fast tracked, and then it got out there and basically started causing a shit ton of uh, UTIs, and so it ended up having to get pulled from the market. Jeez, dude, my voice is. Fucked. I don't understand how you have you just have collapsed like a fucking paper box in a in a, <laughs> in a rainstorm, dude. You started yeah, out dude. so strong. I was like, this is a virile dude. Like, glad yeah. to have him on my team. And now it just sounds like you're getting crushed over there. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, it was and it it was uh, basically it it caused uh, your body to excrete a shit ton of uh, sugar or glucose or whatever, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so. Basically, it turned your urinary tract into a breeding ground for bacteria. Like, yeah, and I, one major area where I see this as an issue is it not only comes from the drug manufacturers attempting to do exactly what we're seeing here with this 5GE article, make their next product seem you know just a little bit better than competitors to have really you know pull on the heartstrings of families, physicians, and like, you know, we have to do everything we can to help this patient. What really becomes a problem is when the healthcare professionals are interpreting this information to each other and that information gets further skewed. For example, I have uh, some nurses that come to me at work sometimes and they want to uh, have a process managed a certain way because administering say, you know, a drug at a slower rate um, or a faster rate has a difference in outcomes. And when it comes down to it, um, it's it's not the case. And it's just there, the evidence that's there when you actually dive into the articles um, and, the, and the trials that have been conducted for these drugs, there's a lot of confounding factors. It's really hard to conduct a trial and, and prove definitively one aspect about a drug. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's kind of where the healthcare connection comes into play. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's just it's mind-boggling how, how mixed up it can get. And Ye- quickly. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, I said and quickly. That's and quickly. A, and quickly. Yeah. yeah How so quickly we're starting to you. be able to stand the, understand the words anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's um, <laughs> it's just it's just really interesting because the the article the article's really lightweight, you know, um, and it just seems like a branding snafu. But I think what when you start digging into to this process, um, like it's fucking dangerous in a lot in a lot of ways, like in a lot of other industries where you know things are being suggested that are um, that are just not real, right? That are just not. Um, I don't know. I mean, what pops into my mind is um, is uh, you know auto- um, advances in autonomous driving, right? Um, and you've got. <clears throat> I mean, people forget this commonly. There, t- there's ten percent. 10% statistically 10% of the population has an IQ lower than 85. Like that is that is what, you know, a bell curve is. That's how mm-hmm. it works. Yeah. And so um all of that is to say um that you know companies are in a position to be really abusive to um, to clients, and they do it to customers and they do it, right? Um I I think the reason I asked the pharma question is cuz you know, I mean, God bless you guys for, you know, for what you do and, and how you do it because it's like there's not a lot of really clear, just do- different doctor friends that I've had, you know, uh, obviously lots of conversations with Daniel. It's not really clear how some of these uh, medications, um, like it may seem like the, you know, the uh, a panacea at the time and then all of a sudden years later it's like, oh my God, that causes cancer, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it's just interesting because we do walk this fine line you know, between um, between 
keeping a competitive advantage and then just, um, you know, and then just kind of taking it too far. One of the things I wanted to bring up here, because I was doing a little bit of tooling around while you guys were uh, were talking about pharma. Um, so 5G, there's an article from Axios that I'm looking at, and I'll drop this into our show notes so uh, so that the listeners can take a, take a look here. But um, there are a couple of technological details um, about 5G that I was kind of missing out on. I didn't find those, but what I did find was that the big interest from um, – from uh, companies and from governments around 5G is the fact that the bandwidth is opened up to such an extent that like hyper fast technology um, can now work at scale in a mobile in a distributed mobile environment. So in China, the 5G networks um, have actually been um, uh, have actually been um, what's the word I'm looking for has been I've been nationalized um, and so and one of the one of the huge uh, conversations there is that you know AI which is not real right now but you know very well you know could could be and will be in the future um, that these networks could support um, some some high bandwidth high bandwidth needs and so the Trump uh, administration, Actually, uh, proposed to nationalize a portion of the of uh, the country's um, uh, 5G networks, coming 5G networks, uh, in an effort to kind of combat um, this this uh, Chinese threat. So, just wanted to mention wanted to mention that because that's a that was an interesting uh, interesting little note. Yeah. All right, coming into the final story here, and oh man, is this a is this a a whiz banger? <laughs> So it's a real humdinger. It's a real humdinger, man. <laughs> um, so this is uh, there is a a this. It's not a celestial body. It is a. I guess it would be a celestial body. Just anything that floats in space. So. Yeah. yeah. So there is a celestial body that has been floating around in space for a while, um, and there is a professor at Harvard that. Um, seems to think that this very well may be an alien spaceship, all right? Um, and so I was looking up a couple of articles. Dale, didn't we cover this a few weeks ago? Um, no, I don't think so, dude. I don't think so. Um, okay, I'm gonna because I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in here and, and provide some more details. But basically, yeah. the, so this guy, this guy, the way they've got him. Um, the the way they talk about him in the Wapo, which is where where uh, where this article comes from, is that um, uh, that he is with the top astronomer at uh, <laughs> at Harvard, right? And so um, the ship we actually did talk about it, man, because the ship okay. is called Oumuamua Oumuamua, right? And it's a um, it's a um, Hawaiian word that means uh, scout or messenger messenger sent, right? Well, it means scout or messenger sent from the distant past to reach out to us, which is a little little long. <laughs> but um, so these guys are are looking at at where this um, where this uh, this celestial body, the way that it's moving through, um, you know, the the uh, our solar system, and they don't really have good answers. As to why it's moving in the way that it's moving, right? Um, and so, what this guy's saying is that <laughs> is that it could potentially be an alien ship that buzzed Earth um, and that now has a solar sail up and is like you know headed headed out on his journey still, I guess you know. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, I, I pulled up this other article about it, <clears throat> and they were talking about that in order to, for it to be propelled the the way that it is, they think that. Uh, Ice is being heated up within it, and then it's ex- expelling gas uh, as the ice melts and um, turns into vapor or whatever. Yeah, well, the, the other thing here is this might just be like a big cigar-shaped, you know, compacted shit from San Francisco that they just, that they just <laughs> pop, popped into the... Uh, Could be Mr. Sanchez's uh, cigar, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah right. that's, that's exactly right. Saying. That's exactly right. But, um, all right, so just real quickly here. If this is an alien ship, if it's an alien ship, you guys hope it turns back around, dude. Yeah, one hundred percent. Nick, I want to meet him. Yeah, Max, would love to meet him. I think they um, would fuck us up. 
like two they, words. They would just pics. be like, "You suck." Yeah, <laughs> send, send nudes. Send nudes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're, yeah, aliens are more sophisticated. <laughs> they call it the under the belt selfie. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. They call it by its true name, the under the belt selfie. They don't. They don't. Sl- they don't slip into this. Uh, you know, into this this street talk of, of they're not savages. They're not, yeah. they're not savages. It's a different world, man. It's a different different world out there. But um, so look, we have just spent about an hour and a half with uh with each other and with with dear listeners did you guys have anything else you want to add on this alien space this potential alien spaceship before we kick her into the home uh, the uh home stretch here i don't think so man interesting well <laughs> nick max we've really appreciated uh having you guys in um hopefully we can do it again and uh talk about some some more controversial shit um that's maybe a little a little harder hitting. Every now and again, we have episodes that are um, kind of surface level. Dude, like two weeks ago, holy <laughs> shit, man! It's just like death and and destruction. Yeah, it was, super- it, was the, it was like one of the darkest fucking episodes we've had. So, <laughs> so it's it's nice to uh, it's nice to uh, you know, um, yeah, to light, lighten it up a little bit. So, anyway, here's my social media handle jig. Uh, we always love hearing from anybody that has any opinion. If you hate us, if you love us, if you just want to send us a blank email because you think it's funny, the awesome, like we just we love it all. <laughs> Tether Radio, T E T H E R R A D I O at gmail dot com. You can find us on Twitter at Tether underscore Radio. You can find us on Instagram, same damn handle at Tether underscore Radio, and you can find us on Mark Zuckerberg's facebook surveillance tool at tether radio all one word so uh it's been awesome really appreciate max you, yeah yeah uh, thanks for coming out guys yeah definitely appreciate it um so this is tether holy shit man is this right episode 36 six, that is correct Thirty six, man coming up on uh you know well we've, we've got we've got a little little a uh, few miles to cover here but uh round, round the basis for for our year that'll be cool and we'll have to buy some balloons or something. Yeah. Um, anyway, this has been Tether Radio, episode 36. I'm Joseph. And I'm Daniel. We appreciate your time. Remember, friends, stay tethered. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>